Hello. Xin chào tất cả các bạn. Không biết là các bạn đã truy cập được vào phần Zoom của hội thảo trực tuyến ngày hôm nay chưa ạ? Ừ, em vào được rồi. Rồi các bạn thì xin thân mến, các bạn hãy vui lòng tắt tiếng nhá. Một lát nữa thì chúng ta sẽ có cơ hội để chia sẻ cùng với thầy ạ. Em vào được rồi. Ok, vậy xin được gửi lời chào đến tất cả các bạn thí sinh đã tham dự buổi hội thảo trực tuyến ngay hôm nay do IDP tổ chức. À, xin tự giới thiệu mình là Hà Linh và đến từ bộ phận IELTS của IDP Hà Nội. Ngày hôm nay thì chắc là mình sẽ chỉ đóng một vai trò rất 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 là nhỏ thôi khi mà có thể đồng hành và cũng như là hỗ trợ các bạn kết nối cùng với chuyên gia IELTS của ngày hôm nay, thầy Cormac McMahon. Hi Cormac. Hi everybody. Xin chào mọi người. <cười> ok, um, có lẽ là thời gian dịch bệnh vừa rồi thì chắc là đã ảnh hưởng rất là nhiều đến các chương trình, các sự kiện và đôi lúc là có thể ảnh hưởng đến cả các cái thói quen hàng ngày của các bạn nữa. Nhưng mà sẽ có một thứ không bao giờ thay đổi. Đấy là kế hoạch của IDP khi mới mong muốn là đa dạng hóa và tối ưu hóa các chương trình hỗ trợ của IDP dành cho các bạn thí sinh ở tại Việt Nam. À, và có lẽ là... Uh, các chương trình hỗ trợ này của chúng tôi thì sẽ rất là đa dạng và một trong các chương trình mà các bạn đang tham dự là một trong các chương trình trong chuỗi hội thảo sự kiện của IDP được diễn ra hàng tháng và ngoài các chương trình sự kiện này sẽ tập trung vào các cái kỹ năng làm bài hiệu quả các lỗi sai mà các bạn hay gặp phải và đặc biệt là sẽ giúp cho các các bạn có cơ hội được trải nghiệm cũng như là được kết nối trực tiếp cùng với chuyên gia của IDP và sau khi mà các bạn đã chuẩn bị cho mình một cái hành trang khá là đầy đủ và sẵn sàng với kỳ thi IELTS rồi thì đừng quên đến tham dự cũng như trải nghiệm các chương trình thi thử cùng với IDP nhé. À, bật mí với các bạn là hiện tại các bạn có thể có cơ hội thi thử hàng ngày cùng với IDP ạ. Và các bạn nghe không nhầm đâu ạ. Các kỳ thi thử của IDP thì sẽ diễn ra không chỉ có hàng tháng, hàng tuần mà sẽ diễn ra hàng ngày tại văn phòng IDP. Và không chỉ có thi thử hai kỹ năng làm bài trên giấy mà các bạn sẽ có thể được trải nghiệm kỹ năng làm bài trên máy tính ạ. Vâng, ra chúng ta sẽ được trải nghiệm và lựa chọn ra cho mình cái hình thức thi, cái loại hình thi phù hợp với mình nhất. Sẽ không có cái hình thức thi nào nó gọi là tốt hơn hay là ít tốt hơn cả, nhưng mà sẽ có hình thức thi phù hợp với từng đối tượng thí sinh khác nhau. À, vậy thì sau khi đã tham dự các cái kỳ thi thử, à, cũng như là tham dự các buổi hội thảo cùng với IDP, à, các bạn cũng có thể đến tham dự các cái buổi hỗ trợ về các thông tin trước ngày thi của mình. À, và đấy là các cái một số các cái thông tin liên quan đến các chương trình hỗ trợ học Phật của IDP. Nếu các bạn có quan tâm thì hãy truy cập website của chúng tôi ở tại vietnam.idp.com hoặc lên fanpage của IDP để có thể đăng ký và tham dự các chương trình hội thảo cũng như là các chương trình thi thử này nhé. Và tất cả các chương trình hỗ trợ học thuật của IDP thì 100% là miễn phí dành cho tất cả các bạn thí sinh ạ. À, rồi đó là một số các cái chương trình hỗ trợ học thuật dành cho các bạn thí sinh đang trong quá trình hoàn thiện các kiến thức của mình để chuẩn bị cho kỳ thi IELTS. Vậy còn các bạn thí sinh mà đã sẵn sàng cho kỳ thi IELTS này rồi thì sao ạ? À, các bạn đừng quên là chúng ta hãy nhanh chóng đăng ký cùng với IDP nhé để nhận được những phần quà vô cùng hấp dẫn. À, với các bạn thí sinh đăng ký thi trong thời điểm này, các bạn sẽ nhận ngay được một cái bộ luyện thi IELTS trực tuyến độc quyền của IDP trị giá 900 nghìn, trong đó đã bao gồm một cái khóa học online, một kỹ năng sử dụng trong vòng 30 ngày. À, ngoài ra thì các bạn sẽ nhận được à, miễn phí ứng dụng học tiếng Anh Elsa Speak Pro trong vòng 3 tháng, à, nhận mã giảm giá lên đến 87% à, cho các cái chương trình học của Elsa từ tháng 6 cho đến trọn đời ạ. À, và ngoài ra nếu các bạn đang có dự định à, đăng ký thi, đặc biệt là kỳ thi IELTS trên máy tính với các ngày thi trong vòng 3 tháng 4 này thì các bạn còn có cơ hội được nhận ngay các cái voucher mua sắm của IDP tại rất là nhiều các nhãn hàng hoặc là các ứng dụng hiện tại mà rất là nổi tiếng ạ. Vâng, đấy là một số các cái thông tin liên quan đến các chương trình thi IELTS tại IDP. Vậy thì chắc là sẽ không để mất thời gian của các bạn ngày hôm nay nữa thì chúng ta sẽ đến với phần chia sẻ của chuyên gia IDP nhé. À, và mình cũng hy vọng là cái buổi chia sẻ này nó sẽ không chỉ có mang tính một chiều ạ mà nó sẽ là đa chiều uh, giữa thầy và các bạn thí sinh uh, các bạn có thể chia sẻ các cái kỹ năng các cái uh, uh, gọi là gì nhỉ các cái tips làm bài hiệu quả mà các bạn có thể đúc rút được trong quá trình học của mình và nếu đặc biệt hơn nữa là nếu các bạn có các câu hỏi dành cho chuyên gia của chúng tôi ngày hôm nay thì các bạn sẽ có cơ hội nhận quà nhé không chỉ có câu trả lời mới có quà mà các câu hỏi được đặt ra nếu các câu hỏi đấy uh, có thể giúp ích cho cái buổi hội thảo ngày hôm nay thì các bạn hoàn toàn có cơ hội được nhận các phần quà đến từ IDP À, vậy thì không biết là các bạn đã sẵn sàng cho cái buổi hội thảo ngày hôm nay chưa ạ? 
Okay, so are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys, so today uh, we will look at the writing test for IELTS. Um, writing task one and writing task two. Uh, we will look at the types of questions you can uh, get. We will look at how do you achieve the best score possible uh, with these questions. Uh, I will give you some tips and some strategies. I will tell you some things you should do. And also I will tell you some things you shouldn't do. Um, okay, uh, also near the end of the uh, workshop, we will have uh, some time to take some questions from you guys and I will give you some feedback and answers, which is very important, okay? We want to help each other, I want to help you uh, do better in the test. So that's what we will do today. Okay. So can I share? Okay, Ling is sharing. Ling Oi, I think you're still sharing a uh, screen. Okay, excellent, thank you. Okay, guys, so let's begin. Let's begin. I share my screen. Okay. Writing task one. No, I'm not sharing. Okay. One second. Let's share this screen here. Okay. Can everyone see my uh, slide? Yeah. Okay. Let's just move this up here. Okay. Writing task one, guys. So, as you know, uh, in the IELTS test, we have two parts, writing task one and task two. Now, very important. First thing is writing task one, only 20 minutes, okay? 20 minutes only. A lot of students spend 25 minutes, 30 minutes on this task. That is a mistake. Okay, writing task two is more important. Okay, so very important here, only 20 minutes and 40 minutes for task two. Now guys, next thing, when the examiner looks at your writing, okay, your writing task one, they are looking for four things. First thing they are looking for is task achievement. Now, this means, did you answer the question? Did you answer what you were asked to answer? Second thing they look is coherence and cohesion. Now, sounds difficult, but this means is your answer logical? Kalozik, okay? Does it have logic? Do you have paragraphs? Okay, so in task one, two paragraphs. In task two, four paragraphs. We will look later at task two. Do you connect your ideas? Do you use linking words? We will look more at these soon. Lexical resource, this is vocabulary. Do you use the correct words? Do you have good spelling? Okay. And of course, number four, grammar. How is your grammar? Do you use the correct tense? Do you use different tenses? Present simple past simple, future, present perfect, past perfect, and passive voice. So again, these are very important because we receive, we receive a score for each of these. So for example, task achievement, 
we receive, for example, six coherence and cohesion. Maybe we receive six. Maybe our vocab lexical resource is not so good in task one. And we receive five, okay? And maybe we have some problems with grammar and we receive five. So they calculate our score based on all of these, okay? A lot of my students, they say, oh, teacher, my grammar is not so good. Or teacher, my vocab is not so good. I say, okay, but also task achievement and number two, coherence and cohesion. They are all important. So if we get six and six, five and five, that will give us 5.5, okay? So don't forget, these are all important. So one more time, task achievement. Do you respond fully to all parts of the task? Now, let's have a look at one task, okay? Here we have a bar chart, okay? Now, as you know, we can have a bar chart, we can have a pie chart, we can have a table, we can have a process or a line graph, but this is a bar chart. Now look at the question, guys. Look here. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. Now, task achievement. Here you have three things to do. Select and report the main features. This is very important, guys. And we, later we will look at this. Only the main features find and talk about the most important parts of the bar chart and make comparisons where relevant. Now, guys, if you, where's my slideshow? Yep. If you do this, if you select and report the main features and make comparisons, your score for task achievement will be good. If you do not, your score will be low. And remember, this part of your score is not about English. It's about your method. Did you do what you were supposed to do? So guys, don't forget about this part. Next part, coherence and cohesion. Okay, so again, this is not really all about English. This is about structure, okay? Did you organize your ideas clearly into paragraphs, okay? Are your ideas easy to follow, okay? Do you use linking words like however, uh, on the other hand, because, do you use words like firstly, secondly, moreover, as a result, okay? These are words that connect our ideas. Now, later we will look at some examples of this, okay? So these two, very important. Now, of course, number three, vocab. So, here, this, of course, is English. This is an English language skill. Do you have the vocab? Do you repeat the vocab? Very important, guys. Don't repeat the same word. Do you have synonyms? Do you say increase, rise, go up, 
or decrease, fall, drop. If you repeat the same word, the score will not be high. Also, spelling. Now be careful with your spelling, guys. Word choice. Again, word formation. Do you build words correctly? Also, guys, very important for Vietnamese students, candidates, don't forget the plural, okay? The plural, nhiều, okay? Very important. Every day I see very good IELTS students and they forget the plural, okay? The letter S is very important. Now, number four, grammar. Everybody loves grammar, okay? Now, here, if you use the present simple and the past simple, okay, good. If you use them correctly, maybe your grammar score will be five, maybe six for task one. However, you should include grammar uh, forms that are more fucked up, more complicated, more advanced, like present perfect, passive voice, past perfect, present continuous, okay? Show the examiner that you can use these, okay? But more important, use the correct tense. If you look at the graph, okay? Let's have a look at our bar chart here. So here we have the two bar charts. Let's look at the year. Do we have a year level? Okay, we have two years. One is 2002, one is 2010. So when we talk about the year, we always hear, we always use the past tense. However, when we talk about the graph, we can use the present. The graph is rising. The graph is falling. The graph falls. The data falls, okay? But be very careful. Look only at the years and decide, am I in the present or the past? Okay. Grammar. Also, guys, very important with both writing task one and task two, make sure you check your writing at the end, okay? Two minutes, three minutes, check your writing, okay? We will look at that later. Okay, so task one. We always have the same structure, okay? Introduction, Overview, body paragraph one, and paragraph two. Guys, we do not, do not, come gun. We do not need a conclusion for task one. Don't write a conclusion. Don't waste your time, okay? Your time is very important. So um, let's have a look at our structure. So here we go. Same structure for every task, writing task one. Now writing task two is different. However, in writing task one, you can see it says, you must only write facts, information, data, and compare. No opinion is given, okay? Let me just change the slide. No opinion is given and no conclusion is needed. So guys, task one, do not write, I think, I think, I believe. Not needed, okay? You will not get any points for that. Focus on the data only the data you see. So let's have a look below. First part, 
our introduction. Here we paraphrase the task and add some information. Okay, so paraphrase guys, very important. Do not copy. If you copy, you will not get points because you are not producing any vocab you are copying. So here we have two pie charts, okay? This is our example. Percentage of electricity in France in two years, 1990 and 2010. Now, our question says, the pie chart show uh, below show the percentage of electricity production by fuel source in France in 1990 and 2010. So first thing, paraphrase. So here we have an example. The pie charts compare the amount of electricity created from five different sources of fuel in 1990 and 2010. These were, or these are, oil, coal, natural gas, hydropower, and nuclear power. So you can see the red words are paraphrased and we added the types of fuel. Some words, guys, some words you cannot paraphrase. Don't worry, okay? You don't have to paraphrase everything, okay? We cannot change pie charts or fuel, okay? So first thing, paraphrase. Next, overview, okay? The overview is a short summary of the main trend, the main feature in the graph, in the pie chart, okay? For example, nuclear energy increased considerably. So we look here, nuclear, red, nuclear increased. That is one of the main trends, okay? Or natural gas production declined sharply. So natural gas was yellow. And you see it declined, it fell. That's a main trend. So first thing, paraphrase, then overview. Overall, the use of nuclear power increased. However, the use of natural gas decreased. Now, in the overview, we don't need to mention, we don't need to mention details, numbers, percent. It's just to introduce the main picture the main thing, the main trend, okay? After the overview, then we talk about the data, okay? Then, only then, we talk about data. So, for example, here we look at some main features. Now, Let's look back, guys. Let's look at this pie chart. How are we going to organize our two paragraphs? Well, in this example, it's quite clear. Here we have two years, 1990 and 2010. So we can play, uh, place 1990 in paragraph one and paragraph two, 2010 but also comparing, okay? Also compare. Don't forget to compare because like we said before, our job, our job is to select, report, and compare. All three of these must be done to get a good score in task achievement, okay? To get a good score. So let's look. Let's look down here. Pie charts. Where are they going? Da, da, da. Here we are. Now, guys, remember 
we are asked to look at main features, important things, significant things. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to look at the big things in the data, okay? So for example, you can see here, we group the ideas based on the structure. Like I said, here we have two years. So each paragraph can cover one year. Now, next one. This is one of the most important tips. This is a tip, guys. A lot of students say, teacher, how do I find the main features? I say, look, the best, quickest way is look for superlatives. Superlatives means EST, words, biggest, smallest, highest, lowest, fastest, slowest, most changed, most similar. These are the main features. The examiner does not want small details. They asked you for main features. So we look for the biggest, smallest, highest, lowest. So when we go back here, mm -hmm, and we look at the pie chart. Biggest, well, biggest, very clear, 67 in 2010. Over here, biggest, mm, not so clear, 28, 28. Another tip, guys, another tip. Sometimes you see a line graph or bar chart or pie chart with a lot of numbers or a lot of words, and it's difficult to see the main features. Guys, don't look at all the details. Look for the big colors, okay? Like here, red is very big. Here, green, blue, and yellow are the same. Over here, orange is very small. Here, also very small. Look at the data, look at the colors. Now let's look at our bar chart. So a lot of numbers here, guys, a lot of numbers, a lot of detail, but we don't need to read everything to find the main features. Look at the bar chart. Up here, this is the highest. Here, lowest. Again, here, highest, lowest. Look for changes, which have changed the most. What's the biggest difference? So, for example, uh, let's look. These two have not changed very much. See here to here, not so much. However, here to here, that's a big change, okay? I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm not looking at the, the words. I'm looking at the picture, okay? I'm looking at the picture. So let's go back to our pie chart. Like I said, we're looking for main features, not small details. A lot of students look for small details. So we have our introduction, our overview, and then our body paragraphs when we cover our talk about our main features. So like I said, look for biggest, smallest, highest, lowest, fastest. Guys, this should take about two minutes, three minutes to find, to select these features. Some students spend a long time looking, looking too long. As you know, the IELTS test, only 20 minutes for task one. So we look for the biggest differences, the biggest changes. Also look for similarities, some things that have not changed, things that have not changed, like orange here is still the smallest. Okay, yellow, very big here, 
very small here. Also, blue has changed. Red has changed a lot, okay? We're looking for these big changes, these big details. Like I said, you can look at the numbers or the colors or the bars. How tall are they? Don't read every number, every detail. And like I said, at the bottom, don't focus on a minor, minor, let's see, minor, less small, small things. Don't focus on things that are not important. These will not help your score. So before we start writing, we need to find these things. Okay. Um, another example. Here we have a line graph. Okay. A lot of detail here. However, first thing I say, okay, what is the highest? Of course, petrol and oil. What is the lowest? Hydropower. Okay, highest, lowest. What is the biggest change? The biggest change between all of, let me, let me just move this. Can I move this? No. I want to move this. Yeah. Yes, there we go. Okay. What is the biggest change? So looks like coal. Petrol has also changed a lot. Coal has changed. So biggest, smallest, biggest change. Smallest change. Well, look at these three guys here. Nuclear, solar, wind, hydropower. They have not changed. They are similar from 1980 to 2030. Hydropower, very similar. Solar, very similar. Nuclear, slight, slight, small change. Okay, now in this example, hmm, how will I group my two paragraphs? Well, I think these three have not changed so much. So I think maybe these three I will talk about in paragraph two. Where is my hand there? Paragraph two. These three, petrol, oil, coal, natural gas, they have changed. So I can put these in a group for paragraph one, okay? But like I said, guys, look for biggest, smallest, similarities, differences. That is how you select main features, okay? And that is your task achievement score. Before you write anything, you must select main features. Okay, um, now let's look at some vocab for line graphs, okay? Let's look at some vocab. And guys, this, I think this will be uh, sent to you after. So you don't need to write all of these down, okay guys? Like I said, lexical resource. Our vocab score is one of the four, where's my hand? One of the four scores. We don't want to repeat. Okay, so going up, rise, increase, growth, surge. These are nouns. Quick changes. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Fluctuation, now. Variation, now. No change, a period of stability. This word, very good word, guys. Plateau, a plateau. This is a very good word. And let's look at our line graph. I'll show you a plateau. Coming back here, hydropower saw a plateau during these years. 
hydropower had a plateau. Plateau, very nice word. And moving down, fall, decrease, decline, dip, drop. Like I said, guys, show your vocab. Those are nouns. How about some verbs? Well, of course, to rise, to increase. To surge means to rise very quickly. To grow, to peak at the top. A peak. Zomyen nui, like a mountain. Peak at the top. Skyrocket means to go up very quickly. Of course, fluctuate, up, down, up, down, up, down, and vary. Also a very nice word. I don't see a lot of students using this word to vary, to go up and down, up and down. Lots of students say fluctuate. Not many say vary. And of course, downward movements, fall, decrease, Decline, drop, dip, dive. Dive is to go down very fast. Also plunge and plummet. Not here, but plummet is a good one. Those are our verbs and nouns. Like I said, if you want a good score in vocab, please guys, use your synonyms show the different words. Okay, next, adverbs. Lots of students, they use verbs, but they don't use adverbs, okay? Show your vocab. For example, it increased sharply. It fell suddenly. It rose dramatically. It grew gently it declined steeply adverbs are very common in academic english you are doing the academic english test so the examiner wants to see academic words okay formal words like these also use your adjectives with your nouns, a sharp fall, a rapid decrease, a significant change, a gradual change. You have the vocab. Don't forget to show the examiner. Now, guys, also prepositions. These are super important for task one. Um, and are difficult. These are difficult because we must remember. So, for example, an increase of, decreased by, fell from, to, dropped from, to, started at, peaked at. A lot of students who write very well, good writers, but they make mistakes with prepositions. Why? Hey, Sal. Well, because the rules for prepositions are not very clear. The rules are fucked up. They're complicated. So we must learn these by practicing, only practicing. Okay. Also dates in December, on Monday, by 1998 between 1965 and 1969, over a 10 year period. Very good for task one. These are very important guys. Okay, now I'm going to show you some examples for these. And I want you, we have a lot of people here, so I can't ask everybody. I want you to think, what is the answer in your head? So for this, from 1979 to 1985, the, the figure increased to, to 50 million. Answer two. Another. 
the figure fell mm, 200 mm, 100 what do you think mm, okay the figure fell by 200 to 100 or maybe the figure fell from 200 to 100 depends depends on the data now this one a lot of people get this wrong only one answer for this the figure peaked at 50 million only one answer for that now peaked is a verb you might a peak, of course, is a noun. And only one answer possible here. The figure reached a peak of, of 50 million. Same one. A. Ah. Percent. The figure decreased from 10% to 15% by the end of the year. Decreased verb. It saw an increase. Now, only one answer possible. An increase of. How about this one? The figure rose, past tense, rose. Careful with your tenses, guys. Rise, rose, risen. The figure rose sharply over a period of five years. Okay. Now, guys, so what have we done so far? We've done a lot. Okay, let's go back. Just refresh. So our four descriptors, very important. Task achievement. Did you answer the question? Did you select main features only? Coherence, cohesion. Did you join your ideas? Did you connect your ideas? Two paragraphs. Vocab. Did you use synonyms? Did uh, you use good spelling? Did you remember plural? Plural, plural, plural. And vocab. Did you use the correct tense? Okay. Sorry, uh, grammar. It's in line. Grammar. Did you use the correct tense? Did you show different tenses? Also, very big tip, guys. In Vietnam, I think 70% of students forget. I go, you go, he goes, she goes, it goes. Remember, guys, he, she, it, third person is always different in present simple, okay? So many people write, um, it rise. No, present simple, it rises. Present simple, it falls, okay? Don't forget that. He, she, it, always different. Our structure, introduction, paraphrase the question. Overview. Overall, the graph shows. Overall, the pie charts show. Body paragraph one, body paragraph two. No conclusion, guys. No conclusion, task one. Okay, so we have the task types. So here we have pie charts, we know. Line graph, we also know. Next one, table. Now, guys, a lot of students, they say, teacher, I really don't like table. Or teacher, I really don't like line graph. Or teacher, come take pie charts. Okay, guys, it doesn't matter what task you do. Okay, maybe table. Maybe line graph, maybe pie chart. It doesn't matter which one you do. 
because they all do the same thing. They all show information, something, okay? They all show data, data. So some students, they say, oh, I hate tables. Guys, don't think like that. Don't think negative, okay? Think positive, okay? They all show data. So let's look at the table. Here we go. The table shows data about underground railway systems in six major cities with date opened kilometers of route and passenger numbers per year in millions. Now, like I said, guys, every task one question is the same. Summarize, select, report main features with comparisons, okay? Same every time. So we spoke before, let's find the main features. Where are they? Well, like I said, we look for biggest, smallest, longest, shortest, oldest, newest, okay? Mui Han, Han is the most important word, like in Vietnamese, okay? Cao Han, it Han, okay? Looking for most. So here, look at the numbers, guys. Forget about the words for Mochut for one second. Look at these numbers. Where is the biggest number? From these, these four kilometers. Well, 394. Okay, biggest. Smallest, 126. Here, passengers, biggest number, 1928. Smallest, oh, very small, 144. Biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest. Okay, now, when did they open? Oldest, uh, oh, London, okay. 1863, mm, so cool, very old. Newest, 1976, okay. Guys, these are the main features. We don't need to write about everything, just these. So, two minutes, find these. And here they are. Let me move this, move to it. Okay, here they are. These are the main features. So many students, oh, they don't, they can't find these. So London, the oldest. Oh, sorry, the table was a little bit bigger. Los Angeles, down here, the newest. Kilometers, London is Zaihan, the longest. Kyoto in Japan, the shortest. Passengers, Tokyo. The highest number, the most passengers. Kyoto, the smallest, okay? These are the main features. The examiner does not want to hear about 1927 for Tokyo or the examiner does not want to hear about 199 kilometers for Paris. They don't care. They want only main features, okay? Now, again, grouping, the same. Well, how can we group this table? A little bit uh, difficult. However, here we have three cities that are very old, London, Paris, and Tokyo. And we have three cities that are very new, Los Angeles, Kyoto, Washington. So can we group them? Paragraph one, okay? We can put the three old railways together. Paragraph two, we can put the newer. 
So it just depends. Guys, there's, there's no rule for grouping, okay? However, look for if you have two years, okay? Two different years or two different cities or um, some old, some new, uh, some expensive, some cheap. Try and divide the paragraphs into two, but that's not the most important thing. The most important is to talk about, write about only main features. Okay. Now, so that's our table. Okay. That's table, line graph, and our pie chart. Now, they are all the same. Okay. Now, guys, before we talk about process, Process question is different. But before we talk about that, one tip I will give you, very important tip. Let's look at this line graph. Very important tip. Zip quan chao, okay? Look at the line uh, graph. Now, let me look here at, uh, let me pick a number, okay, 2015. Let me see, oh, 2000, yeah, 2020. And let me look at petrol in 2020. Okay, so I go up like this here. Now, how many units is that? So 2020, I go across here. Hmm, not sure. I don't know for sure. Guys, very important. IELTS writing task one. Do not guess the numbers. Okay? Come to one. Don't guess. Never guess. Because if you guess the number, like I say, these are example, I say 43. I don't know for sure, is that 43 or not? Don't guess. So what do I say? I say over 40, under 45, between 40 and 45, almost 45, around 40, okay? Don't guess the numbers. If you guess, you will lose points, okay? Don't guess, around 40, over 40. Okay, next. Let me bring some tea first. Okay, next guys, process. This question is different than the others. Line graph, bar chart, pie chart uh, are similar. Table is similar. Process is different, okay? So to get a good score in process is different, okay? Now, the most important thing about getting a good score in the process uh, question is the passive voice, okay? IELTS examiners for a high score. Oh, we have some music. IELTS examiners expect you, if you are trying to get a high score for task one with a process, you must use the passive voice. Okay, you must use it. So let's let's read. A process needs the present simple, passive, and active to describe what happens in each step. Also, you will need sequencers. Firstly, secondly, subsequently, next, following this, after that, then, finally, because we have to show step by step by step, okay? Now, also, if you are able, 
If your grammar is good, the present perfect passive is also used. So let's look at some examples. Present simple passive. So our rule is verb to be and past participle, okay? This is used to describe a process where the person is not important. So guys, the passive voice, we are focusing not on the subject, we're focusing on the result, okay? The object. For example, let's look. The cows are milked by a milking machine twice a day. So let's look at the, here we go. Milking machine twice a day, one bar, the cow. So look, passive voice, the cows are, verb to be, milked. Come noi, don't say, don't write, the cows is milked. Very important. Cows, plural, are plural. The cows are milked. Next one, the milk is put. Milk is single, uncountable noun. Is put. Verb to be, past participle, put, put. Into refrigeration storage. So here we go. The milk is put into refrigeration storage. Passive voice. Next, the milk is delivered. Here we go. Delivery. Delivery is now. Verb, deliver. Past participle, delivered. So the milk is delivered by tanker to the dairy. You can see, delivered to the dairy. Here you go. And last one, cream, cheese, butter are produced. Passive voice. So guys, um, for a high score in grammar, in this task, for process, you must have the passive voice. And also in writing task two, okay? Writing task two, we will see later, passive voice. Learn how to use it correctly. Use the correct tense of verb to be. Okay. Um, I want to look at the sequencers. Where are my sequencers? Oh, yeah, here we go. Now, of course, you can use the active tense. Cows graze, cows eat, sun shines. Active is okay. Passive, better for this. Uh, sequencers. We looked at these already. First of all, to begin with at this point, then after that, you're showing step by step, okay? If you do not use sequencers, your coherence and cohesion score will not be high because your ideas are not connected logically, not structured logically. So don't forget, Firstly, secondly, following, subsequently, the first step, the last step. Okay, very important. And one more thing about this, the grammar. Present, perfect, passive. This is a difficult tense, guys. Okay, this is a difficult tense. But same rule. Same rule. So, for example, when... The milk has been delivered to the dairy. So it is subsequently, it is then, it is um, thereafter put through a pasteurization process. When the milk has been transferred. So this means the transfer is in the past, but it's affecting the present. The action is in the past, but affecting the present. That's why we use present perfect. And with the passive voice. Passive voice, verb to be, okay? Verb 
to be, has been, because with the perfect, of course, we use verb have, okay? Has been, it has been, they have been, I have been, it has been. Remember guys, the milk is third person, it, it has been, okay? And one more example. As soon as the milk and dairy products have been processed. Why have? Because we have milk and dairy products. There. As soon as they have been processed. Now, guys, this present perfect passive is more difficult than present simple passive, like this one. The cows are milked. The milk is put. However, if you know how to use it correctly, then it's okay. If you're not sure how to use this correctly, don't use it. You must be accurate. If you use it incorrectly, Saizoi, your grammar score will go down. Okay, so guys, this is a process. Remember, process is different. Passive voice and sequencers. Passive voice and sequencers. Now, don't be disappointed if you get a process. Okay, process like the other tasks. Method. The, there is a method for every type of task. Okay, guys, so a little bit of practice with paraphrasing. Okay, a little bit of practice. Okay. Uh, I'll show you some examples. Sometimes it's difficult to paraphrase. Okay. Here we go. First little example. Shows. Indicates. Illustrates. Okay. Some, some words we can paraphrase. Verbs. Okay. Verbs we can paraphrase. Adjectives. We can paraphrase adverbs we can paraphrase nouns sometimes okay names never dates never well dates sometimes but some words we cannot so we change shows to indicates we change shows to illustrates illustrates is my uh, my favorite illustrates it's a very nice academic verb okay it's an academic style verb diagram cannot be paraphrased okay it's always a diagram this it's a it's a diagram it's nothing we can't change that word okay let's look at some more uh paraphrasing vocabulary well Figure, no, I don't like that. It depends, it depends. For a table, maybe figure is okay. But for this, no. This is a diagram only. Uh, shows, illustrates, proportion. Okay, guys. Um, very important to understand. The word proportion means a share. It means a part. It means a percentage. Okay. Information we can call data. Okay. Um, number, figure, amount. Okay. Size, maybe size. Proportion of, you can say, a figure. Now, something like this. People in America, uh, the USA, call them Americans or American people. People in uh, Vietnam, Vietnamese, Vietnamese people. Uh, from 99 to 2000, this is in our question. So we must paraphrase between or in the period, in the period between. Okay from 1999 over a period of 10 years okay like i said guys don't 
copy the question. It's the worst start, okay? Uh, as an examiner, if I see your writing, task one, and uh, first thing I see is you copied the question. I think, okay, it's a bad start. You want to make uh, a good impression on the examiner. You want to show your skill from the start. Okay, so the process of producing in three countries in the UK. So those are some examples. Okay, now let's look at some common mistakes to avoid. So things that you don't do. Number one, write about your personal opinion. Okay, so for example, let's go back. Personal opinion. Here we go, milk. I like milk. Milk is one of my favorite drinks. I drink milk twice a day. Great. The examiner doesn't care. You were asked to select and report the main features. Don't give your opinion, okay? Also, remember, don't guess. Don't guess the numbers. Only write what you see. Only write what you see. Uh, other common mistakes, the tense, very common, okay? If the year is in the past, use the past tense. If the year is in the future, use the future tense, okay? Um, also guys, number three here, contractions. Now, contractions are when we make a large, where am I, yeah, here. When we make a large word small. For example, isn't. Don't, aren't. So um, the figure isn't rising. The number isn't rising. It's okay in spoken English or general English writing. This is academic English. The examiner wants to see academic writing. So isn't, no, is not, don't, do not, do not, aren't, are not. Okay, also, use the data units, okay? So, for example, data units, what is that? Okay, data units here, kilometers, okay? Kilometers, this is passengers. Don't forget passengers, plural, kilometers, plural, date. That's a year. What are our units here? Uh, well, this one is called units. And down here is the year. How about up here in our pie chart? What are these units? These are just percentages. Percentages. Remember, guys, percentage is a noun. The percentage of. Percent, we only write with a number. Now, guys, another tip about percent I forgot to mention. Um, when you write 9% or 22%, write the number, only the number, 22%. Don't write the words 22%. Don't write the words, okay? Not necessary. And the, yes, it increases the number of words but it's not helping your score only write the number okay now another thing let's have a look here another thing um well i don't have an example but here's another tip if you are writing numbers like like here okay passengers per year all of these numbers are quite high, okay? 50, 45, 144. It's okay to write the number, 50 passengers, five zero, okay? That's okay. However, guys, if 
the number is 10 or lower. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You must write the word. So eight passengers, E-I-G-H-T, nine, N-I-N-E, 10, T-E-N. When it's 11 passengers, you can write one, 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 one passengers. Okay, less than 10 or 10, write the word, okay, write the word. Uh, let's have a look here. So use the data units correctly. Next one, failure to pinpoint. Pinpoint is theme, find, okay? Failure to find the trends and exceptions. So this is, you did not find the main features. You did not find the overall significant important parts. Next one, including too many figures, too many numbers, okay? Don't write long lists of numbers, okay? Don't write long lists. For example, where is our table? We don't need to write all of these numbers. It's not going to help your score. We only focus on these, the key numbers. So don't write long lists. And of course, last one, word count. Task one, 150 words, minimum, okay? Now, most people, uh, they know when they, when they write. When you practice, you will know how big 150 is. Really, guys, if you're trying to get a high score, every minute in the test is important because at the end, you can check, okay? So really, you shouldn't need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14. Don't count all your words, okay? It's wasting time. So uh, when we look at a checklist, so when we finish task one, cohesion coherence, okay, I compared, I divided my answer into paragraphs, I mentioned the main features, vocab, I did not repeat words, okay, I checked my, my writing for mistakes, now guys, Zip Quan Chamo Vietnam, very important in Vietnam, this one, plural, okay? Don't forget, more than one changes the word, changes the spelling. Subject and verb, also very important in Vietnam. He, she, it. I have students who score seven, okay? In um, their task achievement, they score seven in uh, coherence and cohesion, but they lose points because they say it have, it go, okay? Don't forget, it is different. Um, unnecessary words, spelling, okay, wrong word. We talked, these, we, we talked about these before. And process, at the bottom, guys, process. Use the passive, use the tense, and don't forget your sequence. Firstly, secondly, thirdly. Okay, that is task one. I will take your questions later, guys, about uh, this. We will have time for questions. So that's task one. Now we're going to move to everybody's favorite task two. Okay. Now, normally, guys, in Vietnam, um, I feel that students are better with task two because in task two, you can write more freely. In task one, you must stick with the method. The examiner does not want to, doesn't care if you're a beautiful writer, 
okay? It doesn't care about your opinions. However, in task two, we have, it's, uh, we have more flexibility. Okay, so let's look at task two. Again, in task two, the things the examiner is looking for are the same, okay? A little bit different here. It's called task response. However, task response means, did you answer what you were asked to answer? Did you answer the question? Did you discuss advantages and disadvantages? Did you discuss uh, agree or disagree? Okay. Did you discuss two different points of view? Okay. Must answer the question and develop ideas. Uh, coherence, cohesion is the same. Linking, paragraphs, organization. Logic, as you say in Pengdia, logic. Okay. Grammar, same. Can you use different tenses? Can you show more complex, more complicated tenses? And vocab, again, synonyms, uh, spelling, plurals, all very important. So, task two. Five common types of questions. First one, opinion, okay? Nguyen Quang Hai is the best player in Vietnam. Do you agree or disagree? Okay. Advantages and disadvantages. Um, so, uh, bang mi is delicious, but there are some downsides. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Okay. Problem solution. For example, pollution is a big problem in Hanoi. What? solutions can we make to improve pollution and discussion two views some people say this other people say this discuss both views now guys quite easy to group your paragraphs okay a two-part question similar quite easy to group your paragraphs. So agree or disagree. Introduction. We look at introduction in one minute, okay? Paragraph one, paragraph two, conclusion. Guys, don't forget the conclusion. You must have conclusion in task two, not task one. Task two, must have, by God. Uh, so this one's quite easy. Um, Paragraph one, introduction, paragraph two, I agree because, however, paragraph two, I also disagree because most students don't agree 100%, okay? You say, mm, I agree with some parts, I disagree with other parts. Don't make it too difficult too small. Advantage, disadvantages, very similar. Introduction, okay. We'll look at introduction in one minute. One advantage, maybe two advantages. Paragraph two, disadvantages, okay. Again, guys, I think you will receive these slides after the workshop. So don't worry if you're writing now. Okay, so quite easy to structure. Introduction, paragraph one advantage, paragraph two disadvantage, and of course, conclusion. Okay, same with this. Introduction, paragraph one problem, paragraph two solution, and conclusion. Okay, now sometimes guys, about the conclusion. Sometimes people include a little recommendation, okay? Give your opinion, general opinion. What can we do to fix the problem? 
Now let's look at more detail for this, okay? Same with both views. Introduction, paragraph one, discuss first view. Paragraph two, discuss second view and conclusion, okay? And same with two part, okay? First question, paragraph one, second question, paragraph two. So it's not very difficult to structure the answer. Introduction, body one, first part. Body two, second part. Then conclusion. Now guys, the introduction. The introduction is very important because the examiner will get a, a feeling of your writing. The examiner will get a feeling of what level is this person, okay? So we want our introduction to be strong, okay? And how do we do this? Three parts, okay? First thing, like task one, we paraphrase the question, okay? Never, ever, ever. Kombauza, never copy the question. Second, thesis statement. Now, what is this? This is when you say, in this essay, I will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this. In this essay, I will discuss both views. In the essay below, I will discuss both the problem and some solutions. Thesis statement is when you say, in this essay, I will. Okay. Outline statement. Outline statement is like a short summary. So, paraphrase question. In this essay, I will. Outline statement. This is a complicated issue. So um, there are many factors we must discuss. Or uh, this um, these statements are interesting. So I will break them down. However, first two paraphrase and thesis statement most important. Outline statement can include, however, in our conclusion, that's when we can give that, okay. Now, some problems with the introduction, okay. Some people begin uh, with a very general statement, like nowadays pollution is a big problem, or Nowadays, football is very popular. Or nowadays, uh, young people spend too much time on phones, whatever. Guys, this is um, too general, okay? You're answering a question specifically with detail. Don't start with a very general statement. It's not academic, okay? In an academic essay, we start by paraphrasing and giving our thesis statement, okay? Next, this is a very important sentence, thesis statement, in this essay below, in the essay below. Don't forget that, okay? Now, down here, guys, at the bottom, uh, remember, this is an IELTS exam, okay? You're not trying to be funny. You're not trying to be, you know, interesting. You're not trying to make the examiner laugh, okay? It's academic. It's maybe a little boring, okay? It's a bit boring. So... Don't try and write anything um, too, I guess, too, uh, how would I say this, too, uh, like a book or a magazine or a newspaper, okay? 
Also, don't be informal, okay? You must use formal English, okay? Don't use any slang, being long, okay? No slang. Sometimes I see slang. Don't use contractions. Okay, so here's an example. Question. There is a good deal of evidence that increasing car use is contributing to global warming. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Okay. Do you agree or disagree? So it's this type. Now let's look at this introduction. Now. Maybe this is a good introduction. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. Let's look. Nowadays, cars are a very popular way of getting around. Day by day, many people drive cars, but others feel they cause global warming. Global warming is one of the most serious issues. It affects people's health and well being. Hmm. Okay. This is not a good introduction it's not nowadays too general cars are popular too general day by day okay not academic okay this is not a good introduction it's okay if you want a five maybe six okay if you want a seven eight nine this is not good enough. Why? Let's look. Because it talks about the topic too generally. Also, it copies words. And it does not include a thesis statement. So let's look again. See here? They have copied a lot of words here. They have not included a thesis statement in this essay, I will discuss and I will give my opinion whether I agree or disagree. Now let's look at a good example. Same question, paraphrase, okay. Let's look at the paraphrase. Rising global temperatures and human health and fitness issues are often viewed as being caused by the expanding use of automobiles. Okay, so we've changed some words and we've used some synonyms. Let's look at the synonyms. Now this, this guy, is, this is probably like a, a nine or an 8.5 paraphrase, okay? Passive voice, synonyms. Let's look at our synonyms. Increasing in the question. What a expanding. Car use here in the question. Use of automobiles. Global warming, rising global temperatures. People's health, human health, and what fitness. So people's human. So people. Uh, this, this student used the synonyms and then changed the order, okay? This was a very, very good paraphrase, okay? Now, thesis statement. This essay agrees. This essay will discuss whether increasing use of motor vehicles is contributing, okay? So, remember, the thesis statement is talking about the question and what you will answer. So we say things like the main cause, the principal example. In this essay, I will. Okay. Now, I don't have a lot of time left, so I want to get some questions. Okay, so let's talk about some tips. Some tips uh, for this, for IELTS part two, writing part two. So guys, very, very important. Um, let me look here. Let me look here. Yes, here we go. First thing, we look at the question. What kind of a question is it? What do they want us to do? 
Second, step two. Guys, a lot of people don't do this. I see this in Hanoi every day. People, after 20 minutes, they start writing task two. How? They just start writing. No, big mistake. You must make a plan. Two minutes, three minutes, you must make a plan. Why? Because it will help you structure your answer with logic, okay, with logic. The plan will help you write in a logical order, connect your ideas, and it will help your which score? Let's go back to the start. Ooh. Oh, so it's too far, it's too far. It will help your coherence and cohesion, CC score. So don't forget, always make a plan. Then we make the introduction. Of course, we just talked about that. Paraphrase, thesis statement. Body one, body two, and conclusion. That is our structure. Now, some do's. We talked about this before. First five minutes planning, okay? Introduction, paraphrase, thesis statement, four paragraphs. Now here, start each paragraph with a topic sentence. Okay, so a topic sentence is a sentence that tells the reader what is in a paragraph, okay? It's like a small introduction. Guys, always give reasons and examples for every argument, every point. Give examples from uh, Hanoi, from Vietnam, from Asia, from the world, from your life, okay? Don't make it too informal, though. Keep it academic. Use academic language, okay? Um, also, guys, uh, this is also true for the speaking test. Now, today is writing, but same in the speaking test. Give examples. Keep talking. And also summarize the points. Now, again, use formal vocab. Okay? Use formal vocab. Use the passive voice if you can. Study if you are an IELTS like a five or a six and you don't know passive voice, learn the passive voice in the present, in the present perfect. Okay, like we saw with task one. Again, don't repeat, use linking words, and very important here, guys, at the bottom, proofread, proofread lazy, proofread la kiam cha check so important two minutes three minutes at the end check your work if you find two mistakes with plural or uh, he she it if you find three mistakes your score probably will go up a little maybe it goes up to from six to six point five for this task or 6.5 to 7, okay? Check. So many students don't check. They continue writing. Continue, 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 continue until the end. Guys, if you have 250 words, that is enough. If you have four paragraphs, introduction, body one, body two, conclusion, that's enough. If you write 30 more words, 20 more words in two minutes, probably your score won't go up. But if you check and you find two mistakes, three mistakes, your score will, okay? So always check. Now, last thing before we have questions and answers, don't. Don't use contractions, same task one. Don't be personal too much, I, me, my. Don't uh, use too much emotion, 
Okay. Don't use too much emotion. Um, you can give examples from your life, but not all examples from you. Okay. This is academic. Okay. Now, don't use colloquial. No, colloquial, let's see. Colloquial, uh, okay, like slang. Okay. Don't use casual slang. Don't use simple words. Okay. Basic linking words. You can use, but try and use different linking words like moreover, therefore, on the other hand. Okay. Subsequently. And don't repeat the same word. Any others? Um, don't copy the task. Don't forget to answer all. Summarize, conclude. Um, don't use silly examples. Uh, okay, guys, that's pretty much everything from me on task one and task two. That is how the writing test is structured, okay? Um, again, time management, very important. Don't forget about the clock. 20 minutes only, task one. 40 minutes, task two. Task two is more important, okay? Okay, uh, let me stop my screen share. And Ling, maybe Ling, we can get some, uh, some questions from, from the guys. What do you think? Okay. Uh, do you anyone here have the questions for our expert today? Yes. Uh, may I ask? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, um, for the task one, uh, is it okay if I don't write the overview or paragraph? And I choose to write, um, and uh, sorry, I don't want to write an overview paragraph near the beginning of the of my writing, but I choose to write it at the end of my writing. Is it okay? Uh, yes, that is okay. Um, however, I would recommend that you include it at the start. Why? Because. Um, the structure that I showed you, so uh, the writing, uh, the introduction structure was paraphrase the question and give the overview. But in the writing task one, the overview is, is, is not like a conclusion, okay? The overview is describing the biggest main general trend. Um, Let's take an example and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let me just share my screen here for one second. Let's look at, yeah, let's look at this um, bar chart. Okay. Computer ownership, 2002, 2010. What is the overview of this chart here? M. You can tell me. What is the overview here? Um, they generally increase. Exactly. So computer ownership increased during the period uh, and also, uh, well, let's have a look at this. This is educational level. Actually, so this is more complicated. So we paraphrase the question and then I would say overall computer ownership increased during the eight year period. Now, why would I prefer to put that at the start? Because it's part of giving the reader a general picture before you give the detail, okay? So it's kind of like if I say um, to you, uh, Vietnam, okay, the subject is Vietnam's football team, okay? Uh, overview, the Vietnamese football team has had more success in recent years than before, okay? That's my overview. Then my detail is 
for example, or then I talk, then in my body paragraph, I talk about the Asian Federation Cup, the AFC Cup. I talk about the under 23 team, Uhaiba, you know? So the overview is better at the start because it gives the reader a feeling for what will come next. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you for your question. Any other questions? Uh, I have one. I have a question. Uh, um, uh, in the writing IELTS task two, I usually struggled with uh, coming up with relevant ideas to the topic. And what should I do? Oh, that's a difficult question. That's a big question. Um, you struggle with relevant ideas for the topic. Um, is, it, is it one type of question, like advantages, disadvantages, or is it all types of questions? Um, all types of questions. Okay. Um, that's a difficult question. And this, this also happens in the speaking test. Um, my advice would be, when you are planning, uh, your answer, when you are writing your, your plan and you're struggling for ideas, you need to try and bring the topic, whatever topic, back to uh, your experience, okay? If it's a difficult subject like the economy or environmental change, okay? What you need to do, if you're having problems, if you're not familiar, try and write some keywords, some notes about things you have experienced, okay? For example, the economy. Um, you can think about the Vietnamese economy or pollu uh, environmental uh, pollution. You can think about Hanoi or... Um, a lot of times the topic is about maybe young people, social media, uh, things like this. You need to try, if you're struggling, you need to try and bring the topic into your world of experience, into what you know, what you've heard on the news, what you've read on the internet. And don't be too personal, okay? Try not to make it not about you, but about your society, your community. Uh, normally, you will be able to find some material, some examples, and then you can try and develop those in an academic way. Make it sound more, uh, less personal and more uh, general in, about society. It's a diff that is a difficult question, but yeah. try and bring it back to your experience. Um, thank you. You're I have a question, please. Yeah, hello. Hello, sir. Hello, Xin Chang. Hello, sir, I have a question. Okay. So I, I, I have a question about writing test too. Uh, I heard a Vietnamese teacher, uh, he said that we shouldn't use the sequence words in writing test too. For example, firstly or uh, secondly, something like that. And he, he said that we should uh, use the idea to link the, the sentences together. So uh, do you think it's true? Um, well, it depends on the topic. Uh, I. I don't think it's true, like a like a rule that you should not use those uh, sequencers. Um, give, I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say the 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 topic says environmental problems are growing year by year. Should we limit economic growth to help the problems? Uh, and then in my body paragraph one, I say. Um, economic growth has caused many problems in society. Firstly, it has created um, global warming. Okay, firstly, it has pollution has increased uh, temperatures. 
consequently, um, animal species are suffering as a result. Um, secondly, I, it's okay because here in this example, you are giving two reasons or two examples. So it's okay to sequence those, okay? However, you could, if you used that language in task one, uh, maybe some other words like furthermore or moreover might be better. Uh, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't use sequencers because sequences are used to show uh, a list of things, but to show them academically, clearly. Um, however, there are better words like moreover, furthermore, um, in addition to this, uh, possibly better words. They are also sequencers, those words, because they're showing uh, uh, structure between or uh, um, a sequence between one thing and the next thing. They're just probably slightly more formal. Okay. I think I Thank you for the question. Well, it gives me a have two question to ask. Okay. Um, the first one is that like, could you please explain again the difference between um, a tacit statement and an outline statement? And my second question is that I'm aiming for uh, at least about eight for writing test two. So I just want to ask like, what is the main difference? Uh, what are the main differences between a band eight writing test two and um, and a band seven? Okay, that's a good question. Two good questions. Okay, let's have a look at my slideshow again. Okay. Uh, thesis statement and outline statement. To be honest with you, um, where is my PowerPoint? Let's look at this. Oh, that's past one. Yeah, here we go. Um, thesis statement and out out outline statement. What, to be honest with you, when I teach IELTS, I uh, uh, task two, I generally uh, focus only, uh, mostly on the thesis statements. Um, some teachers believe that both are necessary. I personally believe that to paraphrase the question and the thesis statement is a sufficient uh, introduction. However, your question was, what is the difference? Well, let's have a look at the difference, outline statement. So here we go. Um, in this example, it says, firstly, this essay will discuss the product production of greenhouse gases by vehicles. And secondly, it will discuss other toxic chemicals released by internal combustion engines. Now, here, this is a combination of a thesis statement and an outline statement. Um, a thesis statement basically says, in this essay, I will discuss the pros and cons of um, economic growth. In this statement, uh, sorry, in this essay, I will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the mm, 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 mm. However, you can see here in this outline statement, they have included more detail, more uh, like a summary of the specific things they will include. So if I would say, in my opinion, a thesis statement is a shorter description, a more general description of what will be included. Whereas an outline statement has a thesis statement with more detail about what will follow. So basically, if you, let's look here, if you include a, uh, the paraphrasing and a thesis statement only, your introduction will be a little shorter than if you paraphrase the question and include a combination of thesis and outline, giving slightly more detail about uh, the content of the essay to follow. Um, again, not a huge difference, I would say. However, more detail with the outline statement that includes a thesis statement. Is that it's not that clear, I know, but uh, what was your second question again? It was about eight and nine. 
Yeah, um, my, my second question is that I want to know the main differences between um, a band eight writing test two and a band seven, because I am aiming for a band eight in okay. the test two. Okay, perfect. Well, let's have a look here at the descriptors. So hopefully Google will work for me. Yes, here we go. So can I zoom? Now this, I, I can put a link. I'm sure you've, you, you've probably looked at this before yourself. Uh, can I open this view image? Okay, this is not Google. So can you see this okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's have a look here. Writing task uh, <clears throat> two, and you were looking for the difference between seven and eight. Okay. It was seven and eight, correct? Yeah, okay. So let's have a look at the each of the descriptors very quickly. How much time will we have? Five minutes, no problem. So <clears throat> let's, let's have a look here between seven and eight. Okay. Look closely here. The difference here was there may be a tendency to overgeneralize and or supporting ideas may lack focus. Okay, whereas here in it, it says uh, relevant, extended and supported ideas. Now, what does that mean? That means that the supporting ideas for your opinion, for your advantages, for whatever, have not been developed enough that you give your supporting idea. However, it wasn't um, detailed. It wasn't. Ex it wasn't expanded enough. Now that does not mean that it was much longer. It means that the language you used was more illustrative, was more uh, descriptive, okay? Something you can do uh, for that is to read some of your old answers, okay, for a question. Um, and then, or better way is to go on the IELTS uh, official website, try a writing task to yourself. Then after that, read a model answer at score eight, okay? And look at how they develop each um, idea. How do they develop it? Ah, let's look at coherence, cohesion. Okay, can I move over? Can I go over here? I can, okay. Uh, for a seven, seven and eight, quite similar here. So logic, uh, logical structure, manages the cohesion. Now, here, this is important. Um, the cohesive devices. Sometimes people don't use enough linking devices or they use too many, okay? Sometimes I see students saying, however, uh, every sentence is beginning with a cohesive device, a linking word. You don't want to use too many. It's not natural. It doesn't look academic. Only use them where you are connecting ideas. Okay, don't overuse. Um, I think that's the only real difference between those. Now, the big difference between seven and eight comes over here, which is our vocab and our grammar. Um, Vocab with seven, okay? Um, both seven and eight will use less common vocab, okay? However, eight will generally use them in the correct context. Um, people often use more difficult synonyms, okay? That they have found on a thesaurus website. However, unfortunately, like with every language, not every synonym is appropriate in every situation. Now, how do you fix this? I would say by reading. Reading is how, uh, reading native speakers or, or books is how we learn which synonym is appropriate in which 
situation. Uh, someone who has a seven will use a synonym. Can I think of an example? Uh, it's difficult to think of an example, but they'll use a synonym that is close to correct, but is slightly in the wrong context. Um, what other uh, what other differences do we have here? That's our that's our synonyms. Um, can I think of anything else? Seven and eight plurals are okay. Um, spelling is generally okay with seven and eight. Um, voc uh, grammar probably the biggest difference of all is grammar. Um, most students who are seven will be using the, the simple tenses with uh, some perfect tenses and continuous. However, uh, often they will use the perfect tense when it's not necessary, like the vocab. Often I see students who are trying to get an eight use tenses that are inappropriate, but they, they think that they look better, okay? Another thing with vocab I didn't mention was idioms, okay? Uh, a lot of students on an eight score or a nine score use idioms um, where they are appropriate, especially in speaking, but also in writing. But it, it's difficult without understanding natural native English style by reading to understand the correct context. Again, with um, grammar, I see students trying to use um, passive voice too much, or they try and use present perfect continuous instead of present continuous when it's not necessary, trying to make it too complicated. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm nearly out of time and it's a difficult question, but is that, is that helpful? Yeah, um, yeah, I think it is helpful enough for me. Thank you. OK, uh, the last piece of advice I'll give you is because if you're moving from seven to eight, the differences are small. So reading uh, on the topics that are common in IELTS, that will really help you. Try to read about those topics. All right. OK, thank you. I think I have time for one more question, guys. Uh, Excuse me, I have a question in uh, writing test two. Okay. Um, when I write uh, a topic that uh, asks me to di discuss both views and give my opinions, mm -hmm. um, do I have to uh, present my opinion in the introduction? Or, I mean, uh, I tend to write uh, this essay will dis discuss both view and uh, present my opinion. Uh, but I uh, present my opinion in the body craft. Is, is it okay? Yes, it, it, is, it is okay uh, to, to put it in the introduction because basically uh, you paraphrase the question, then you say your thesis statement, this essay will discuss, and you can develop that, like we said with the previous lady, you can develop that with an outline statement, which is basically, uh, this essay will discuss the uh, both views. Um, overall, uh, I would side with the former, or I would uh, um, personally agree more with the former view, the first view, um, the reasons for which I will outline uh, later or below. Um, it's okay to mention it there. Don't don't develop it in the in the introduction. You can develop it um, more, I would say, in the second body paragraph or in the conclusion. Um, normally, students take body one for first view, body two for second view, and depending on the topic, if they can wait until the conclusion to give their own view. It, it gives you uh, a nice ending to the essay. Now, if the topic is very difficult and you're struggling, maybe bring your, develop your, uh, your, your own view in body two, just to, to, to follow the second paragraph. 
and then conclusion will just be a summary. Hello, example. teacher. Yes. Can you show me how to pass the graduation exam? Can I show you how to pass the graduation exam? Uh, I, I don't think I can. I don't know which exam you're, you're talking about. Sorry, it's in light. Graduation, I, I don't, I, this is not a graduation exam, uh, unfortunately, so we can't pass. Everybody gets a score in the IELTS uh, exam, so graduation, hello. sorry, I can't help. Yes? Uh, hello, I have hello. a question about the writing test too. Yeah. So uh, mm. for the, for the <laughs> time... Uh... <laughs> okay, you can be quiet. <laughs> You can be yeah, quiet. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, what the fuck, man? Hi. <laughs> Am I? Excuse me. Am I? Oh, no, we don't know. Thay không đưa. Đúng rồi. Okay, you can continue with your question. Thank you. For the um, problem and solution type, mm -hmm. uh, do I discuss the problem? And uh, then I, I uh, give my solutions, or I just go straight to the solution. Uh, no, you just dis you discuss both. Um, okay. So a problem solution uh, question normally we structure like this: introduction, discuss the problem in body one, then discuss the solution in body two, and then write the conclusion, which gives a summary of the essay. Um, now, if, if you are struggling to, to write a lot about the problem, okay, move to the solution. But remember, you need two paragraphs and you need 250 words. So um, try and give examples, okay? If you're struggling to write a lot uh, about it, try to give some examples. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you I have I've only time for one more question, guys. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Hello, the, hello, hello, sir. Okay, hello. Uh, so, can you recommend some uh, website or some books that uh, we can read to uh, um to, to know more vocabulary for the writing? Sure. Uh, just give me one second. I will show you a uh, website here. Um, now, of course, the best the best way to prepare is to attend a course. However, I will show you a website here that I use quite a lot. <laughs> Some very funny guys. Okay, guys, uh, this is quite a good website, IELTSexam.com. <laughs> Uh, on the side here, you see there's a lot of uh, different parts, tips, sample uh, questions, sample answers. Here is where you want to go to, a IELTS practice tests. So when you go here, you can open, and there are a lot of practice tests uh, that will, you can uh, look at. Now, also, there's a sample exam. There are a lot of uh, resources here. So that, that website is ielts-exam.net, okay? Um, teacher, uh, I have a last question. Okay. Um, could you recommend us some books for IELTS vocab? For IELTS vocab? I think there is a book, let me just check online. There is a book called Vocabulary for IELTS. Let me just check. That's um, it's not Google. Um, I, I, my personal opinion is that reading, um, reading books that contain a long lists of vocabulary is is not really very helpful. Um, however, let's have a look here. Vocabulary for IELTS. There is one. I, uh, there is one book here. Your, my opinion is that you're better um, just to read 
uh, read online, read things online that are similar to the topic. Okay, I think I found the book here. Sorry, I'm reading everything in, uh, I'm reading everything in Vietnamese, so I'm a little slower. Okay, let me share my screen. So I think you can see it here. Cambridge English vocabulary for IELTS. Quite good, okay? Uh, that would, I would recommend, I would recommend that book. Okay, guys, thank you so much to everyone for today. Thank you to IDP for hosting the, the, the workshop. Ling, have you anything to add? Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Komar, for, our, for the very you know, useful workshop today. And thank you all of you guys for joining us today. Um, rất là cảm ơn các bạn đã đến tham dự buổi hội thảo ngày hôm nay cùng với IDP ạ. À, mình biết là còn rất là nhiều câu hỏi nữa các bạn muốn uh, hỏi chuyên gia của chúng ta ngày hôm nay đúng không? À, tuy nhiên thì uh, do thời lượng có hạn thì rất là tiếc khi mà chưa thể trả lời hết tất cả các câu hỏi của các bạn được. À, vậy nếu các bạn có quan tâm đến các chương trình hội thảo hoặc là các chương trình hỗ trợ học thuật của IDP thì các bạn hãy cùng vào website của IDP tại vietnam.idp.com hoặc là lên fanpage của IDP để có thể cập nhật các chương trình tiếp theo của IDP trong thời gian tới nhé. Và cũng đừng quên là IDP đang có rất là nhiều các chương trình uh, dành cho các bạn thí sinh mà sẽ đăng ký cho các kỳ thi trong các tháng kỳ thi trong tháng 3 hoặc tháng 4 tới ạ. Uh, một lần nữa thì rất là cảm ơn uh, chuyên gia của IDP cũng như là cảm ơn tất cả các bạn đã đến tham dự buổi hội thảo ngày hôm nay. Hy vọng là chúng ta đã có một buổi chiều chủ nhật rất là uh, có rất có rất là nhiều các thông tin hữu ích đúng không ạ? À, nếu các bạn à, ngày hôm nay đã đặt câu hỏi cùng với thầy thì như mình có chia sẻ lúc đầu, các bạn sẽ nhận được các phần quà từ IDP. Các bạn hãy inbox cho IDP, fanpage của IDP với cú pháp là hội thảo hoặc là workshop 14 tháng 3 à, cộng với cả thông tin về số điện thoại và họ tên của mình nhé để nhận được các phần quà hấp dẫn từ IDP. À, rất là vui khi nhận được các câu hỏi cũng như sự quan tâm của các bạn đến chương trình ngày hôm nay ạ. Cảm ơn mọi người rất nhiều và xin hẹn gặp lại tất cả các bạn trong một chương trình khác của IDP trong thời gian sắp tới. Goodbye!